I think we can go ahead and get started. So this is my uh, first experience with Twitch. So I'm probably doing everything wrong. Um, we'll figure those things out, I guess, as we go. Um, so I, a couple of things in, in general, if you want my contact information, um, I can be reached at naomicedar.tech and on Twitter uh, at Naomi Cedar. Um, so before we start, uh, I um, want to give you the link to this notebook, which I just pasted in chat as well. Uh, also, uh, I am the author of the Quick Python Book 3rd Edition. Uh, the publisher, Manning Publications, is giving that away for free as an ebook until May 30th. Uh, so if you follow that link, you will see that the cost for the ebook is zero. Uh, this is uh, Manning's way of um, responding to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, I'm, I'm honored that it was actually one of the books they considered important enough to, to give away to people so that they could use that to skill up while they were sort of out of action during their crisis. So, so by all means, visit them. There's some other free eBooks there. All of the rest of the eBooks are half off through May. Uh, paper books are 35% off. So, um, you know, that's, that's a way that they are trying to be able to support people. And um, I'm happy to be a part of that too. Um, I also want to mention today, it would have been the first day of PyCon. Uh, and I guess PyCon is going on. We have PyCon online. Um, there's the link to the YouTube channel. There are already about a dozen videos, I would say, posted. Uh, so you can you can watch PyCon talks. Um, it's um, the first time in 17 years that I haven't been to a PyCon, so it will be uh, a little bit strange. But uh, I know that we all miss it, and let's hope that we can do something next year. And you know, as for me, I'm. I'm here. I have been in quarantine now or lockdown for over a month, but in your honor, I'm wearing a, a, a nice conference shirt. Uh, so we can go ahead and, and chat a little bit uh, about variables in Python. Uh, so the thing that I'm interested in with, with this little session is uh, forming mental models. And I, I, I'm thinking a lot about mental models, so I thought I'd explain what I mean by that phrase. So I will resort to quoting Wikipedia. A uh, mental model is an explanation of someone's thought process about how something works in the real world. It is a representation of the surrounding world, the relationships between its various parts, and a person's intuitive perception about his or her own acts and their consequences. So mental models can help shape behavior and set an approach to solving problems, similar to an algorithm. Um, and that's, that's what I'm interested in, is making sure that people have correct mental models of um, how things work in Python so that when they go to use Python, they make the correct assumptions, the correct uh, interpretations. And what I'm going to be talking about here is um, a mental model for Python variables. Uh, now, you know, we all know what a variable is at some level if we've done coding. Uh, everybody in all programming languages talk about 
something that has to do with, with a variable. But I've found that not everybody has the same understanding. So let's look at some variables in Python at a very simple level. So here we've got um, x is a variable. We're setting it equal to 4. y is a variable. Is that equal to 5? And then um, z is another variable that is being set to x plus y. All right, this is, is pretty straightforward. And at the end, we print out z. I'm expecting nobody's going to be too surprised when we find out that that, in fact, is 9. So those are three variables, and that's that's all seems deceptively easy. And, and of course, variables are essential because of the way we use them so that we can have different, different values. But the question I've found people do not have a good answer to all the time is, how do variables work? Are they containers? Are they pointers to an address in memory, something else? What, what, what are they exactly? And the problem is that not all languages actually have variables that work the same way. So um, in a lot of languages, when people talk about variables, they talk about variables containing, holding, storing data. And this makes a certain amount of sense because after all, if we've got a number or a string or some other object with, you know, you know, connected to a variable, the data's got to go somewhere. So it must be in the variable, right? So um, I, I sometimes call that the bucket model. So uh, I, in, in that it thinks of uh, variables as, as containers or buckets. So if we go back to the example we just looked at, the variables x, y, and z would be containers. They would be places in memory where the values 4, 5, and then the sum, our answer 9, end up being stored. And um, the variables themselves then are some way to connect to those spaces, I guess. So what I want to do is do a few simple experiments to see how this goes. And the simplest thing we can do is just create and change some variables and see how they behave. So here I've got an even simpler example. I've got x is a variable equal to 1, y is a variable equal to 2, and then I set z equal to the variable x. So I've just got three variables. And you know, if, I, if I execute this, um, how would you describe this in terms of the container model? Well, um, I think that... Um, the first thing that you would say is that if we're using a container, one is put into X, right? And then two is put into Y. And then we come to X equal or Z equals X. So what's going on there? Uh, if it's a container, 
does this mean that z is getting a copy of what is in x? Does this mean that x is being put inside of z? So I think the container model tends to imply in people's minds as a mental model that um, each variable's value contents is not connected to any other variable. I mean, again, if we're talking about we give two children identical glasses of milk, it's not exactly the same milk in each glass. One child drinks her milk. That doesn't empty the other's glass. Once we do that and put them into two separate containers, they're kind of independent. So let's test that assumption. So first of all, we've got the same thing here. All this is doing is just printing stuff out so that we're clear what's going on. So um, x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals 1. It's what we would expect. Now let's change x. Remember, we said that um, z was equal to x. Now we're going to change x. So the first question, and this is kind of an easy one, is what do we expect to print out now? Okay, and, and I, I want you to think about that for a second. And then let's see what happens. Okay, this probably didn't surprise you. So we said x equal to 1, y equal to 2, z equal to x. Then we changed x to 4. Now we've got 4, y is equal to 2, z is equal to 1. Okay. This seems to be consistent with the uh, container model, right? I mean, it looks like um, the variables x and z are, are completely independent, just like we talked about. But let's not just leave it at integers. Let's talk a little bit about what happens with uh, other types. So here we're doing exactly the same thing except we're using two strings. Okay, it looks like it is behaving as we would expect. And again, we can change the value of x, see if that affects the value of z. Okay. And no, it doesn't. It works the same way as it did with uh, integers. So Again, consistent with what we were saying about a container model. Okay, now let's try it with something that's a little bit more complicated. So I've got um, two lists here. So we're setting x equal to the list 1, 2, 3, y to the list 4, 5, 6, we're then setting z equal to x. So let's print this all out. Okay, so x is what we expect, y is what we expect, z is, is what we expect. Okay. Now let's change the first element of x. So we'll, we'll make it be a 9 instead of a 1. Now, what do you expect will be printed out? Okay, and I'm, I'm going to pause a second to let you think about that.
Okay. Um, let's see what actually um, happens. So you see here that X got changed to 9, 2, 3. And Y got changed to 4, 5, 6. But Z also got changed. Just to be sure, let's try something in the opposite direction. Let's set the last element of Z to 10 and see what happens. Okay, and there you can see we got um, the change going in the other direction. Okay. Um, and this is not really consistent with what we were probably expecting. So we can think about what's going on here. And I will actually take a breath and, and look at the, at the chat. I know it's been there and I, I haven't broken up my rhythm, but, but so uh, first of all, hello, Bruno, glad to have you here. Uh, and uh, secondly, in response to the question, what would be a common application for this formula? Um, the exact examples I'm using are pretty abstract. You know, they're not really connected much to a real life scenario, but um, you could in a lot of cases want to have a list of things. And maybe it could in fact be the ingredients in a recipe. Uh, it could be anything. And um, there's a temptation to sort of do exactly what I've done, which is assign another variable to it, and then go off and change the one variable and not realize that maybe you've changed your original. So that's, that's what's behind these examples. And if, if that doesn't actually help at all, ask, ask again in the channel and I will try again. Uh, so let's let's continue. There's another issue that we haven't discussed that also needs to be considered if we're thinking about variables as containers. Uh, so um, the thing is, if variables are containers or they're a dedicated space in memory, which is another way of thinking that, about it, then it's sort of puzzling that we can use the same variable for different types of data because different types of data are gonna have different storage requirements. So, you know, like a string containing the entire text of Moby Dick which is my favorite example of a very long string, will take much more space than um, a float containing 1.1, say. But yet, in Python, it's perfectly legal to use the same variable for both of them one after the other. So you can see here that um, when I set A to 1.1, it says that A is a float and it contains 1.1. When I set A to the entire uh, text of Moby Dick, okay, I did leave out 21,000 lines, but you get the idea. Uh, it then says that it's a string and it's able to store all of that text in the same variable. So in a language that uses variables on the model of containers, 
you usually can't get away with that. Back in the bad old days of programming in C, uh, you could in fact do it, but if you put a longer variable in place of the shorter one, it would just overwrite into the rest of your memory. You would have a buffer overrun and you would get a seg fault and your program would crash. Uh, in a language like Java, it won't even let you try. So we've got something else going on here. And the way to, to get at this is to use a function that Python's got called id. And what the id function is, let me show you. It's a way to get the unique identifier of every object in Python, uh, in a session of the Python interpreter. So um, what, whatever it is, everything in Python would be an object. Uh, and each one of them has its own sort of serial number that is unique for that run of the interpreter. So you can't, you don't get any others. It's, it's always going to be the same thing. So if we get two different variables have the same ID number, that means they're actually referring to the same object. So if we use our X, Y, Z examples here, uh, which right now I think we're pointing to the list, but you'll see that X has an ID number that ends in 632. Z has the same ID number. Y has a different ID number. So in other words, uh, X and Z are the same object. Now this causes two questions then. One of them is, how do we get the same object in two variables at once? That, that at least doesn't match with our model. And then the other question, of course, is how do things work with integers and strings? We don't get this thing, but with lists, we do get this sort of phenomenon. You know, and, you know, what, what are the types that will behave like lists? What are the types that will act like an integer? And how can we figure out which is which? So we'll get to the second question a little bit, but for right now, I want to think about the first. The container model, the bucket model, as I would call it, is not working out. So is there another model that will handle behavior better? Well, of course there is. Uh, and that is the notion that variables are labels that can be attached to different objects. Now, where those objects come from in Python, that's a different subject. Uh, we will talk about that another time. Um, but uh, let's just uh, take it right now that we, we have a model that suggests that variables are labels that are attached to uh, various objects. So, you know, in, in my case, um, a number of labels can be attached to me. I mean, my name, uh, I'm a teacher, I'm a student when I take my Spanish class, I'm an observer when I watch somebody else's stream or somebody else's talk. So all of those things can happen and a variable could work the same way. So, you know, we could say that, you know, Naomi is uh, a label attached to this particular person, me. Uh, and that uh, the teacher is Naomi. So it's another label being attached. And then, you know, if we say Naomi is sitting, we can ask the question, is the teacher sitting? The answer is yes, because they're the same person. 
So again, we can look at this and think about it in terms of um, a label model, but look at our same examples. This means we would be attaching a label x to the integer constant 1, y to the integer constant 2, and then z would get attached as another label to the same object that x was attached to. That works. And if we change one variable like we did before, uh, we would now have x that as a label pointing to a different object than that would be 4. So if we print that out, it makes sense just as well as the container model in that um, x is now pointing at a 4, so that's what gets printed for x. z is still printing at 1, so that's what we get. But we can also be sure about this by using the id function. So if we use this, uh, we can go through the same thing. We set the variables. We'll print out their IDs. Then we'll change x to equal to 4. And then we'll print out their IDs again. So we see that the first time through when x and z are equal to 1, they both have the same ID, ends in 2, 1, 1, 2. Now when we make x equal to 4, it's got a different ID ending in 2208. And uh, z still is pointing to the original 1 object with the ID 2112. So this worked with the container model, but this also worked. So it works just fine with uh, the idea that it's a label. But what about if it's a list? So again, just kind of recalling what we did here. Uh, if um, we have our two lists and we change the first element of one list so that we get a 9 here, then yes, we get a 9 there. But if we're using the label model, this kind of makes sense because we have both x and z as separate labels that are pointing to the same object. Okay, so let's let's we can use the id function here to test this theory. So again, we're doing the same thing except this time we're printing out the ids so that we can see what happens. Okay, so again, we have different IDs, but here we've got 2584, 2584. So Z and X are pointing to the same object. Here we change X, uh, X's first element. And yeah, they're still pointing to exactly the same object. That's why when we change one, we change the other. Um, and um, this all makes sense with this particular model. Now we still could assign x to a completely new object um, to uh, a, a new list, for example, and that would be a little bit different. Like here, we do the same thing we've done before, but for our change, we assign x to a new list. So when we do that, we can see here we got the same thing, same thing, 6, 3, 4, 4. But when we assign x to a new list, it's now pointing to a different object. It's got a different ID whereas z was pointing to our original uh, list object. So 
there's one thing that we can kind of um, point out about this. And that is the reason that we can change a list in place is that a list is a type of data that, that is called mutable, that is changeable. Uh, in, in, and what that means is we can add, remove, or change things inside that object without having to create a new object. On the other hand, uh, there are a number of Python objects that are immutable. That means they can't be changed. I mean, it, it makes sense that, that a constant like 1 or 1.1, 1 .1, those are going to be immutable because it would be silly to say that you could change 1 to be 2. That would not be helpful. And there are other objects that are immutable just because, because that's the way that Python was designed. So strings are immutable. I, I used to make my I used to make my computer students chant, strings are immutable, strings are immutable. Uh, so are tuples, frozen sets. They're all immutable for various reasons that we don't need to discuss right now. Um, but then on the other hand, lists, dictionary sets, and most user created class are mutable. And that means that they can be changed in some way without having to create a new, a new object. And I think there's yet another layer too to keep in mind. And that is with lists, and dictionaries and some container and some objects like that, you can get sort of layers and layers of this sort of thing going down. So, you know, if you think about a list, a list is an object that can have a variable attached to it. So we had, you know, x equals the list one, two, three. And each of those slots, each of those index values then is kind of an implicit label that is pointing to one element. And each of those elements themselves can be Python objects that they could be lists or dictionaries or something else. And so the same thing can repeat in nesting layers until you get tired. Uh, but it doesn't really change the way that things work. So in fact, if we make a list X that contains two lists as its elements, so one four is one list, five six is the other list, and we um, set the variable Z to point to X, we, we can do the same thing and we can um, change one element out of Z, out of Z's first item, I should say. We can change one element out of Z's first item. And it's the same thing. Our, our overall um, objects stay the same, but even inside of that, our first element of X which is, was the 1.4, 1 in 4, and then became 9 in 4. That object, too, stayed the same. So here we're getting the IDs of, of those things that are uh, the first element. And again, it's, they stay the same. So even if this is nesting, you, you still have this same effect going on. Okay, so what have we learned? Um, I think the main lesson here is that the better mental model for, for handling variables in Python is to consider them to be labels, not containers. Uh, I, I used to tell my students to think of post-its 
as in post-it notes that you can stick on things, as opposed to buckets. Okay, Python variables are post-it notes, they're not buckets. Um, and the other thing is that if the object is mutable, then changing it by way of one variable will change it no matter all of the other variables will see the same object will see the same change. And if they are, if it's an immutable object, then of course that won't be the case because the only way you can change uh, the object that a variable points to if it's immutable is to make a point to another object. So let's just look at a few examples and, and see I, if, if anybody has, you know, is good with the, uh, the, the ideas here. So here I have made a tuple, one, two, three, and X points at it. And um, then I did Z equals X, same trick we've been doing before. And now I pointed X at a tuple, seven, eight, nine. And tuples are immutable. So when I print out X and then print out Z, what should we get? We get different objects because they're immutable, we have to point at different objects. And by the way, I apologize, my dog is whining in the background because she's a princess. Okay, so another example here with a dictionary. So we set X equal to a dictionary that has a key, the word one and the value, the number one. And we set Z equal to X, same trick we've been doing. And then we say, let's add a key two to Z and set its value to the number two. And if we were to print that, if we were to print out X now, what do you think we would get? Okay. If you didn't say that it changed X to have a key too as well, go back and rewatch the rest of this thing. No, this is the case. We changed, it's the same object we changed. Um, it. It, it by using one variable, it's going to show up if we look at it using the other variable name. Because again, they're just two labels attached to the same dictionary object. Okay, this one should be pretty easy. We have X is a string one. Strings are immutable. Z equals X, then we set Z equal to two. I'm sure you've got this one. We get one and two. They're immutable, get different objects. And then finally, uh, we've got um, an example here where we have nested lists again. So we set X, we set Z equals to X. And then here we do a little bit of uh, slice magic. That is, we're going to take the first element of Z and we're going to replace the space right after the first element or right before the second element, whichever you prefer 
we're going to replace that little space, which is a zero length slice, with this list two, three. Okay, by now you should be expecting if we change Z, we're going to change X. If you're new to Python and not really used to the way slices behave, you might be a little bit surprised to see that what this does is just in fact insert uh, the list two, three into the list one, four. So this area here was the spot one colon one. Uh, and so it just gets inserted in there. Okay, I have one bonus example if people are interested. I mean, somebody wave or say something. I am. Um, or not. Um, well, you all still seem to be here, so I'm going to keep going. There's something related, and this is a gotcha that you will find in programs all the time. And this has to do with default parameters when you define a function. They tell you you should never use a mutable value for uh, a default parameter. Why is that? Okay, the reason for that uh, is, well, it depends on two points. So first of all, functions are objects just like everything else in Python. And they're created when the code defining them is loaded. And that's usually when the file is, 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 is loaded. That's when the, the code gets executed and gets run. OK. Um, and oh, we've got a comment on default or parameters, and it's, it's part of it. Um, and the other thing is that when a function object is created, any default parameter objects get created at the same time. So here is where, you know, we're basically off script. So I'm going to just kind of make this up. Um, so I've defined a function that has a default parameter. And that default parameter is an empty list. Lists, as we know, are mutable. So I can then say, um, let's just call this function. OK, prints out empty list. That, that's, that's lovely. OK, now let's do something more in this function. Let's say that we do x append um, an element, just the string high. OK, now if I run that, same thing happens, right? It's nothing. And, and on the other hand, I can um, give it give it a, 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 a different parameter, and it will override this, as, as somebody mentioned. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let me do this. I'm sorry. We'll give it the list there. So we can do that. That's fine. But suppose we do this. And we call this function twice in a row with the default parameter. 
Now, what happens here? Well, let's see. Now, this, why did it do something different the second time? I called exactly the same function. Okay. Well, again, how would we, how would we work on this? Well, I mean, I think you could probably guess what I would do is I'd use the ID function. And let's even put in another foo. Okay. Um, I call that. You'll see that every time it's using the same default parameter object. If I change that default parameter object, it then shows up as different the next time. That's why you're not supposed to use mutable values for default parameters, because without knowing it, you are changing the default parameter. OK, I, it's um, this this object is created and, and is there again. The entire function object, including that default parameter, is created when it's loaded. So this, this will always happen, and you keep on doing it. You keep on getting more stuff. So the, the answer that you're supposed to do is um, you make your default parameter something like none. And then you can say if x is none, um, we'll then say x uh, equals uh, empty list. And so now when we run it, uh, it's going to behave itself and we will get um, slightly different objects, but it doesn't even matter if we get different objects. We're going to get the same empty thing every time. So that, that is my little bonus. And yeah, as, as Bruno says, there are other ways you can do that. So the trick that he's got there is actually using um, the, uh, what should I say, uh, the or operator so that if x is true, it will be passed along. If not, then you will use the constant for uh, empty list. Yeah, and that's, that's another good way of doing it so that you can kind of make sure you never get into this problem. But again, this is something that people who think of variables as containers in Python can get fooled on. And I was actually talking to someone this morning who had been taking Python lessons and she was saying she did, you know, this whole thing didn't make sense to her because her teacher had been telling her that it was uh, variables were containers. And when she saw this explanation, she's like, oh, yeah, now it makes sense. Well, it's because it's a better mental model. We're, we're not really too worried about what happens under the covers, but this will actually keep you from writing buggy code. OK, um, that is really what I've got. Um, I think um, here's the, the, the list of links again. And... Um, let me paste those in one more time. Uh, there. So if there are any questions that come up, anything that you want to, to raise based on this or whatever, uh, you know, feel free to, to ask now. Um, you know, you can find me, like I say, on Twitter. And if you have any 
ideas. I have a, a short list of some similar things that I might do. So if you want to, um, you can put in any requests or suggestions, any feedback like that, I'd be happy to hear. Um, and you know, what the, what the heck, I think I've actually survived my first hour of, of Twitch. So hey, that's good. Okay, well, thanks a lot, everyone.